Okay, now we are to counting the number of atoms and molecules. Now, you know atoms and molecules are much too small for us to count directly. So we have to have a concept to be able to do it. Why is that important? How can we talk about concentration, number of particles per some unit volume, if we can't count the number of particles? So the concept that involves the counting of atoms and molecules, which I want you to read on, is called the mole, the mole in chemistry. In order to understand the mole, you have to understand Avogadro's concept. Now, I'm going to go here. This is something I want you to write down and kind of put it on a piece of paper and because we're going to play off of this. This is the key concept. Okay. Number one, I'm going to say that a mole of anything contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And we'll be talking about that. A mole of anything contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. In some cases, it's atoms, and in other cases, it's molecules. It just depends on what you call it. This particular number is called Avogadro's number from the gentleman that came up with it. The other thing I'm going to say is a mole is the gram molecular ma mass, if you talk about molecules, a gram atomic mass of a substance. So, so these are the two concepts to hold tight to and write them down. All right, so we go back. The What technically is a mole? Okay, the mole is, a, a, is defined as the amount of substance that is in, shall we say, one gram of molecular weight of something. Okay, so a mole of iron contains, since I told you a mole of anything contains 6.02 times 10 to, 10 to the 23rd, one mole of iron contains the same number of atoms as one mole of gold. Once you get it to the mole concept, you can equate it. The number of atoms in one mole of iron is equal to the number in one mole of water. All right, so I go back to the concept. A mole of anything contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, and that could be molecules or atoms. All right, now, how, does, how would this work? Getting one mole of table salt. Okay, the first thing, so you wanna play through what I have here in my PowerPoints. First thing you have to know is know the molecular formula, which is NaCl for table salt. Then you calculate the molecular mass. Where do you go to do that? Go to the periodic chart. Go to the periodic chart. You look up the mass of one atom of sodium, and that would be 23 AMUs. Then you go to the chart and look for chlorine. That's 35 AMUs, okay? Then you will add those two together. That's 58 AMUs. That is the mass of one molecule of, of sodium chloride. Okay. Now, to get one mole of table salt, then, you merely take that number and weigh out that in grams. Now, those are two, an AMU and a gram are two separate things. But I won't get heavy into that without doing face-to-face. -face. So we're making it as simple as possible. If you weigh out 58 grams of table salt, which, which, is, which you got from getting the mass of one molecule of table salt, then you will have one mole of table salt. Now, how many molecules are in that, one, in that 58 grams? 6.02 times the 20, 10 to the 23rd molecules. 6.02. As I alluded to, 58 grams and 58 are not the same thing, but I won't get heavy into that because it would take some quite a bit of explanation. All right. So we go further. Getting one mole of water. Okay. Know the molecular formula, H2O. Calculate the molecular mass. One AMU for hydrogen. So there are two. There are two AMU, 16. So the molecular mass of water is 18. 
That means if I weigh out 18 grams of water, I have one mole. I have one mole. How many molecules of water are in that? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So I've shown you how to do, get a mole of water and a mole of table salt. Let me go further. Okay. So you always want to think when it comes to atoms and molecules in terms of moles. In terms of moles. One mole of anything, again, contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. It could be molecules or it could be atoms. Okay. Now, this is the calculation, and I'm not going to do this. This is, to, this is the calculation which shows how you did that, but even though an AMU and a gram are two separate things. But I'm not going to get into that. Even in class, I just kind of bring it up. But just take for granted now, to make it simple at your level, that all you have to do is to convert those AMUs into, into grams, and you have it. Okay? So let's go back and review. A mole of anything contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Okay? Now I'm going to come back here and say we did a mole of table salt. Okay? Now table salt is NaCl. Now this is what you want to kind of, table salt's NaCl. Okay? The Molecular mass of salt, I got it here at 58. So I weighed out 58 grams of table salt. Okay. When I weighed out 58 grams of table salt, that was 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of table salt. Now, this is what you want to work on. If somebody said, well, well, well Dr. Clark, how many atoms are in this mole of table salt. Now, not how many molecules, but how many atoms. Then what you would do is look at the, the formula, NaCl. There are two atoms, this and this, in each molecule of table salt. So then, if somebody said how many atoms are in one mole of table salt, you would multiply times 2, which would come out to 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd. You never change the exponent deal. Why? 58 grams of table salt gives you 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. But in each molecule are two atoms. Thus, they are 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in that one mole of table salt. Think about it and play with it a while. Okay. So always think in terms of moles when you're attempting to count atoms and molecules. Okay. And again, like I said, don't worry about turning it into grams and everything of that nature there. Okay. So I'm going to end there because now we're going to use the mole concept to make solutions. We're going to use the mole concept to make solutions, but I'm going to put that in a, in a different video. Thank you.